Okay, Algebra 1, uh, Chapter 1, Section 3, out of the Big Ideas book, Midpoint and Distance. And we're going to start with midpoint. Um, obviously, using some logic, uh, the term mid is going to be middle. So, if we had a line segment of some sort, just like this, and we decided that we decided that M was going to be our midpoint, and that's line A, and that's line B. And then maybe we put uh, um, maybe some values. Uh, we used A and B. Let's just use C and D. Then M we're constructing as the midpoint, which means this segment is congruent to this segment. So CM is equal to or congruent to DM. And you could write those either way. That could be MC is congruent or equal to MD. Either way is fine. And so that would make line A is the actual bisector. And the bisector cuts that line or line segment. Uh, it's a line. I'm sorry. I put the arrows on the end. Line A is the bisector, which cut in it into two equal pieces. So let's say we've got that line, um, or any, let's say line segment, and we know that we've got our midpoint, we're going to call this ABC. Let's say at this time, maybe they tell us that um, that this end is 5x plus 8, and the second end is 9x plus 12, and they have identified to us that these are congruent by putting the little congruent marks that they will do. And they're going to want to know what AB is and BC is. Obviously, those will be the same. And they will want to know what the total AC is. So since we have two congruent segments, all we're going to do is take 5x plus 8 and set it equal to 9x plus 12. And then we're going to solve for x. So I would subtract 5x first, my preference. That gives me 8 equals 4x plus 12. I would then subtract 12 from both sides. And so that gives me 4x equals negative 4 for a final answer of x equals negative 1. So if I plug those back in, 5 times negative 1 is going to give me negative 5. Negative 5 plus 8 is going to give me a value of 3. So AB is going to equal 3. Now if we've done everything correctly, BC is going to equal 3 as well. So again, we take 9 times negative 1. That's going to give us negative 9. Negative 9 plus 12 is going to give me that 3 we're looking for. And then our total, AC, is going to be 6. So there's midpoints um, just by looking at a bisector. OK, the next one is if they give us coordinates. Now, we don't have to graph these because um, they will be diagonal, and sometimes it'll make it more difficult. So we just want to use the midpoint formula. And that midpoint formula is we're going to 
add the x values and divide by 2. That's going to be our x coordinate. Then we're going to add the y values and divide by 2. That's going to be the y coordinate. So the first one is going to give us 1 plus 4 divided by 2 as our x coordinate, and then negative 3 plus a negative 2, that's going to be minus 2 as our y coordinate. So we get 5 halves and negative 5 halves. Now, for those of you who wanted to graph that, if you graphed it, it's going to come out on a non-crossing uh, junction. And so there's going to be a little bit of human error on that. So here's how we eliminate that. We just use the midpoint formula. OK, so what if they give us one of the endpoints and then a midpoint? And then they ask us to find the other endpoint. So let's see what that looks like. So the first endpoint is 1, 4. And then we're going to substitute in a midpoint, which is 2, 1. And so we want to find the other end. OK, so we knew what m equals. And we, we used that equation where we added x1 plus x2 and divided by 2. So in this case, we're going to actually start with the m. And so our midpoint is 2. And that's x1, which in this case is 1, plus x2. all divided by 2. So how do I solve that? We're going to use a little bit of algebra. We're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of those 2's. That's going to give me 4 equals 1 plus our x value of our second point, and then subtract 1. So the x value of our second point is 3. We're going to do the same thing for the y value. So the midpoint of our um, of our y, or the midpoint of our line segment, is 1. Then I'm going to take my 4 plus my y2 and divide that by 2. Same thing, multiply both sides by 2. That gives us 2 equals 4 plus the y value of our second point. Subtract that 4. And the y value of our second point is negative 2. So written out, the coordinate of our other endpoint is 3, negative 2. All right. So here's the distance formula. And so a lot of times we can't just measure with a, uh, a ruler or a protractor or something. So we actually have to use the distance formula when we're given these coordinates in the coordinate plane. So we're going to say we have a coordinate of 2, 3. And our second coordinate is going to be 4, negative 1. So I'm going to identify these as x sub 1, because it's the x value of the first point. This is the x value of the second point, so it's x sub 2. The 3 is y sub 1, and the negative 1 is y sub 2. And so now it's just a simple substitution problem. Everything is squared underneath that square root to keep things from being negative, because we can't have negative distance. OK, so let's find our distance. We're going to take the square root of our x2, which is 4, minus our x1, which is 2. We're going to square that. Plus our y2 is negative 1, and our y1 is 3. And we're going to square that. That's going to be 2 squared 
plus negative 4 squared. So that's going to be radical 4 plus 16, which is radical 20. And when I put that on a calculator, that's going to come out to be about 4 and a half. Okay, so 4 and a half is our distance. And that is it. Chapter 1, Section 3, Midpoints and Distance.